Okay. <clears throat> hello, 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 and welcome to today's stream. Now, you must be looking at the name and wondering, hey, what's this about? I don't think there's a game named Vampire Diaries. And you're right, there isn't a game named Vampire Diaries, it's a show and a book series, but there's not many people that, you know, know about that, and we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. But today, I thought I would do something a little different and by that i mean i will be live reviewing the show vampire diaries and you guys will tell me what you think <laughs> i'm not sure if how many of you guys are actually aware of the show or you know have actually watched it because it came out back in like 2009 and we are in 2022 but i've noticed that even now the fandom for the vampire diaries is still pretty active so who knows maybe but yeah today we'll be talking about that and see i'll be honest i have seen the show like a couple of times and by a couple of times i mean one too many times I don't know why, I just sometimes, you know, sometimes you just want to watch something, you just want to, you know, switch off your brain and just watch something and not think too hard about it. So that's basically my relationship with the Vampire Diaries. But then, at one point, I started to notice that I could no longer switch off my mind because there were so many things happening in the show that just made me go, what the fuck, wait, that makes no sense. And then my, you know, my dumb pleasure became into turned into something frustrating so i thought you know what let's just talk about it let's just get all of those thoughts out in out in the open for everyone to hear <laughs> so yeah today we're talking about the vampire diaries and just gonna get started before we do i just want to make it very clear i am not a filmmaker i am not a director i'm not a script writer i am someone who has more than 10 years of experience with writing so that's something i can comment on and i am someone who binge watches a lot of shows and thus has a lot of opinions about about things so yeah huh <sighs> This, this is gonna be a right, guys. We're gonna go through a lot of things. So, yeah. The Vampire Diaries. Uh, let's talk about it. So, I don't know how many people are aware, but um, 
The Vampire Diaries is actually a show based on a book series by L.J. Smith. Yeah, so. Okay, the music is a bit too low for me. Okay, there we go. Yeah. The Vampire Diaries is a show based on the book series by L.J. Smith. And it came out back in 2000. The first season came out in 2009. This was very much off. And before we get into that, we all have to explain why this show was picked up. Because the book series, The Vampire Diaries, is a pretty old series. So it was strange, right? Have to pick up such an old book and just start and just make a show out of it. But there's a very good reason for that. You guys remember this show over here? This magnificent piece of literature that till date everyone talks about. Yeah. This show, this movie, and the very hit book series is one of the reasons why we got the Vampire Diaries show. And you must be thinking like, no, come on. You know, that's not true. But, my, my dudes, seriously. <laughs> Let's see. The first Twilight book dropped in 2005. The first movie came out in 2009. Vampire Diaries came out in 2009. And before the book series, before the movie, the first Twilight movie was even made, the book series was so freaking famous. (laughs) Hi, (laughs) Sue. We're just doing... (laughs) Let me do a recap real quick. We're just doing like a quick live review of the vampire diaries don't worry we're not talking about twilight (laughs) so yeah the first twilight book came out in 2005 hi hi welcome to the stream yes so uh we are doing a live review and i will obviously be talking to you guys throughout so don't worry about that but hello welcome to the stream it's nice to see you here so yes, the first Twilight book came out in 2005, and when the first book came out, everyone was crazy about it, literally. I was back in, I think, uh, I was in middle school, I think, when the first book came out, and everyone around me was talking about it. My, all my classmates, their moms, their dads, their brothers, even their pet dogs, everyone freaking wanted a brooding vampire boyfriend. Seriously, it was too much. Now, it wasn't the vampire boyfriend. They wanted the, you know, hot-headed werewolf. I'm, I'm not going to talk about Twilight too much today. Because, oh god, that's another kind of forms. But yeah. So, obviously, after, the sh- after Twilight became a big hit, they had to capitalize on it. Because at that time, every book that came out was a vampire-related book. So, what did the CW do? They picked up L.J. Smith's book series and turned Vampire Diaries into a show. And we got eight seasons of it. <sighs> Fun times, guys. Fun times. It's not to say that the Vampire Diaries was bad in any way. It had its charm. It had all these characters with all these personalities and Okay, let's be honest, one of the main reasons why everyone loved it was because it had hot people running around. Hot guys, hot girls, hot older men, hot older ladies, they had it all. (laughs) Oh my god. So yeah, it wasn't a surprise the show was a big hit. And it was a big hit to the point that you got 8 seasons of it. It ran for such a long time. And it ran for such a long time, even though the female lead over here, Miss Nina Dobrev, left the show halfway through. But it still kept running. And people still kept watching it, even though people hated it. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into why it was so hated by the time it ended. So, before we, like, get into all the reasons why the show went down the hill, um... In short, the reason would be capitalism, but we'll come to that, we'll come to that. Let's talk about what the story was. The Vampire Diaries was a show about a girl named Elena Gilbert. And she, in the beginning of the show, had just suffered a very traumatic incident in which she lost both her parents. 
and now she wanted to start all over and obviously as why fiction would de- demand it when she was going through this dramatic period in her life a new guy joins their school and obviously he is brooding he is hot and he's very very mysterious you know where, where i'm going with this right <laughs> and as soon as this new guy joins the school strange things start happening and what do i mean by that there are murders in the town and no one knows what's going on people think it's animal killings but all the victims are always drained of blood what could it ever be vampires i don't think so <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know why i make lame jokes and i just laugh at them myself <laughs> but yeah so when the show started it had a pretty interesting premise like despite the good looking people it actually had a story and it actually had decent characters but it kind of just went downhill after that so before we go into the show season by season let's talk about the characters because come on let's be honest when it comes to a good story the characters are the foundation and if your characters aren't good your story is there's just no point to it so yeah our first character would be the lead elena gilbert oh jesus this girl <laughs> so when elena first started in this show she was she was basically yn do you guys know what yn is so yn is basically a writing to trope and you know you'd see yn a lot in fan fictions so yn basically starts stands for your name so it's basically an opportunity for readers to insert themselves into a story and be all romantic with the, with the male character so that was elena she was sweet kind gentle i know all these words mean the same thing but i don't know how else to explain her personality <laughs> that thing i confused for yes no oh i wish <laughs> i wish it was yes no <laughs> but it's yn <laughs> yeah so we have elena gilbert she was she was just a plain girl there was nothing that made her stand out except for the fact that she suffered a very went through a very tragic event and she's pretty <laughs> but yeah the things that define elena gilbert are that she's kind and uh maybe you know she's willing to do anything for the people that she loves that's another thing but that's again another why why and trope but then and you know in the beginning she was tolerable because she actually genuinely cared for the people around her but then the show went on and her personality oh my god her personality the way it shifted the turns it took this was her by season uh, i think season 6 or 7 was no season 5 was her last season yeah nina dobrev left the show after that but yeah by season 5 she was this selfish annoying brat who thought she was good like she's like oh my god i'm such a kind person but at the same time could only ever think about herself like there was this one point in the show where um one of her close friends lost her father and instead of being there for her friend Elena was making out with her boyfriend and going on about her own loss. Like, oh my god, I'm so scared of losing the people around me. And I'm like, girl, your friend, you know, she's just she, she needs you more. This isn't about you. Your friend just lost her dad. Oh, Elena, how you fell. And by the time the show ended, like by the time she left the show, there was just nothing interesting left about her. Oh god. And it's kind of sad though because when the show started everything was about her, right? But then as the seasons went on, she was less and less relevant. They still you know kind of kept trying to push her into the spotlight even though there was no she had nothing to do with the story, but they still kind of kept pushing her into the spotlight. Like there was this one episode just one episode that they tried to do where um yeah where they tried to make it seem like her parents death was not an accident but instead intentional like somebody intentionally killed them 
and in the end it led to nothing there was so the reason why her parents died was because there was a car accident that basically their car went off a bridge and they died in that she was in the car as well and she was the only one who survived and they tried to make it into like this murder mystery just for one episode and in the end what did it lead to oh yeah it was an accident oh really this information that i knew since the very first season thanks oh god but yeah that was elena that was they tried so hard to keep her the main character even after the actress left the show which was oh, i don't know why they kept i don't know why they did that it was such a weird choice <sighs> stefan salvador he was the mysterious brooding high school newcomer who took you know who f- elena fell in love with at first sight you know as girls do you know they'll see a guy and they're like ah you are my everything so when it comes to the actors they did a pretty good job because elena and stefan's chemistry from the very moment very moment they met was kind of you know it made sense so stefan was as male leads go he was the kind one the gentle one the caring one oh no i'm describing elena yes there's a reason why i'm describing elena because of the fucking same people oh god <laughs> from the show but yeah the thing about stefan was that so you know that one thing about edward that made everyone fall in love with him you know not his good looking face or his you know or his vampirism no 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 the thing that made everyone fall in love with edward was the fact that he didn't drink human blood and that's exactly what stefan is he also does not drink human blood he abstains <sighs> and yeah he is like he this i don't know there's not much i can say about stefan's personality because he was always meant to be you know in a book when you have a love triangle you have the bad boy and you have the good guy and so he was the good boy next door that was his personality and throughout the show we he actually does get some growth because we see that he has a tragic past he we see why he doesn't drink human blood it doesn't have anything to do with edward's reasons that he doesn't drink human blood because once he starts he can't stop and in the end he ends up breaking people's necks like quite literally just biting through the neck and beheading someone that's the reason why he doesn't drink human blood he doesn't have any control and you see his life and everything he went through so he's actually a very sympathetic character but the problem comes is the show never knew what to do with him after one point and they made it pretty obvious because he was there but the storylines that were given to him were like it just made you go what the fuck <sighs> you know when you have one character in a show that's like everyone's emotional punching bag that's kind of stefan just that instead of being everyone's emotional punching bag he's the writer's emotional punching bag so if anyone has to suffer it is him and of obviously being the hero that he is by the time the season finale came by he died i know i should say spoiler alert but i think we we've, we've done this long enough <laughs> and the show has been out long enough to you for you to know that i am going to give you spoilers yeah he fucking died and the way he died was also so stupid that I'm going to get into that when I go season by season. But yeah, the way the way the he died was also so stupid. The, ma- the the reasoning was so absurd that he could have actually lived. He could have actually lived, but they never gave him that chance. They just killed him off. And he was oh, one of the good characters. You know the one you root for, you're like, "Oh my god, I hope you survive." Yeah, he died. And It, the way he died it makes it makes it so obvious that the only reason why he died was because the you know because of the shock factor to make you go like oh no but then you know when you actually kill someone off a shock factor it feels very very cheap hi lucy so yeah he died demon salvador 
और आई आई डोंट लाइक दिस कैरेक्टर आई एम सॉरी आई नो अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल लव डेम इन बट होल्ड ऑन ओके आई थिंक दिस शुड बी फाइन या आई नो अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल लव डेम इन एंड ही हैज हिज मोमेंट्स ही सैसी इन एवरीथिंग बट ही इज वन कैरेक्टर दैट हैड द लीस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ ग्रोथ थ्रू आउट द शो लाइक he had such little growth that between season 1 and season 8 he's quite literally wearing the same clothes they can't even give him new clothes that's the amount of growth he has same clothes same same jeans same dark shirt same leather jacket from season 1 to season 8 it's it's tragic so obviously when you have Seth Stephen as the good boy next door you have Damon who is the bad boy and extremely inappropriate because when the show started the main go- the main girl Elena was in high school and Damon is well he is a uh, hundreds of years old but yeah <laughs> Damon be <Fischer>. sure <laughs> uh, so yeah the show didn't know, I feel like the show didn't know what to do with him as it as i said with previous characters as well but yeah because so when damon came into the show and i have to say his entry into the show was pretty good it will it made you go like oh what's this and it made you curious to what his character would do next because he was introduced in a way that would make you think that he was the primary antagonist for the season but that was not but that did not happen so damon is when he first comes into the show he is like this guy hell bent on ruining stefan's life because okay so here's the reason stefan is the reason why damon became a vampire stefan forced him into it because he didn't want to be alone so damon hates his brother and so he comes to the town mystic falls that's where all of this takes place to ruin stefan's life and he kind of goes about it in a way that makes you like really hold your head and wonder oh my god what's going to happen next but then his personality changes instead of someone trying to ruin stefan's life he becomes someone who's constantly trying to stay safe stefan's life and his bond with stefan throughout the show was like a very big focus like their brotherly love family is for some reason a very 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 big fo- focus not just in the vampire diaries but also in the spin-off series after that but yeah so family and he he is very impulsive damon is extremely impulsive he'll just do things because he's in a mood so if he's angry he'll freaking kill someone and then you're supposed to root for this guy and want want good things for him but it's very hard to do that because half the time i just want to punch him in the face Okay, are we back? I think we are. Hold on. I don't know why my stupid app keeps doing this sometimes. It's very annoying. Like Streamlabs, please get a hold of yourself. Phew. So yes. Oh my god, I'm going to give it a few minutes for everyone to join back and then we're going to talk. awesome okay right i don't know why that happened oh god right so caroline that's who I, who i was talking about yeah so when caroline was first introduced in the show she was basically the bitchy cheerleader you know basically every character in the show is a trope but she was the one who got the most development by the time the show ended So when she started off she was the bitchy cheerleader that you know you couldn't help but kind of hate and this kind of went on for a few episodes but then you start feeling sorry for her and she is one of the reasons why I freaking hate Damon so basically uh when 
Caroline's story basically starts with her wanting to be with Stefan. But obviously Stefan has a thing for Elena and Caroline feels bummed. And she meets Damon and they start dating. So in the show, vampires have this thing known as compulsion where they can basically manipulate people into doing what they want. And that's what Damon did to her. He drank her blood, he hurt her and he basically compelled her into forgetting. When he was angry, he would take out his anger on her. He would use her to try and break up Elena and Stefan and yeah, and basically this sh- and he did all of these horrible things to her. And what the showrunners wanted was for us to completely forget about this as they tried to paint Damon as the good guy. And I ain't forget. I don't forget what he did to best goal. No, 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 no. But despite everything that she went through, uh, by the time the show ends, Caroline is kind of one of the best characters. You can't help but love her. And she... It's sad that they don't address everything that Damon did to her and kind of just completely ignore it instead. Like, it's to the point that when Elena, Caroline's best friend, starts dating Damon, it's just treated... It's just... It's as if what Damon did never happened. He kind... He basically abused her, but we are expected to just forget about it. She, But she's still the best girl. She does whatever she can to help people. She has more personality than Elena. And if the show was about her, I would actually prefer it more. Okay, now let's talk about Bonnie. Oh my god. (sighs) I think there are tons of reviews on, on YouTube about why Bonnie was the most mistreated character in the show whole show so bonnie's story starts with her realizing that she's a witch she has magical powers she's from this very strong witch family known as the bennett line and yeah and but unfortunately she's a she doesn't get more development apart from that she's a witch who loves her friends so Throughout the show, she's the ex machina, the person you go for, go to when you need something solved. Basically, uh, if something is impossible, don't worry, Bonnie probably has a spell. And I don't know what the showrunner's issue with her was, because there is not one season of Vampire Diaries where Bonnie doesn't almost die or she dies. Like, she has died multiple times on the show. It's weird. It's like they hated her. But they couldn't get rid of her because when Bonnie was gone, who was going to, you know, snap her fingers, make some magic work to, you know, solve everyone's problems. And the sad part about Bonnie's existence in the show is that, so she never got a storyline. Everything about her revolved around Elena and her friends and saving them. And it's so bad that there's this there's this part where Bonnie is reunited with her mother, her mother who left her when she was young. So they're reunited. And instead of having that chance to bond and for that story to develop, her mother mother is basically killed and turned into a vampire, causing Bonnie more trauma. And instead of giving her time to, you know, come to terms with what happened, she is pushed back into the story to save everyone again. She, it's like she doesn't have a chance to even grieve for her father when he dies. She she can't even rest when she's dead. Oh my god. Even when she's dead, her spirit is roaming around trying to find ways to save people. I'm not going to talk about the racism that uh, Bonnie's actress went through. Because I feel like I am not exactly equipped to talk about that. There are much better videos on YouTube that can address that issue. And if you guys want, I will link them in the Discord for you to check out. But yeah, Bonnie deserved so much better. Even her ending was so horrible. And I'm going to get into that in a bit. No, we're not talking about Elena again. This is Catherine. Vampire Diaries has this big thing about doppelgangers, so basically Elena is Catherine's doppelganger. And Catherine is a badass. We love Catherine. She is the vampire who 
turned Stefan and um, Damon into a vampire and she is like oh my god so basically her pers- she's sassy she's smart she is always always two steps ahead of everyone and she's she'll leave you to die she doesn't give a fuck she will leave you to fucking die if that's what it takes as long as she survives she was a great character but instead of getting her we got elena yeah. okay so right now i'm going to be going over the minor characters like real quick instead of wasting time on that we don't talk about this clown i hate him he's the worst the show would be so much better without him those are my thoughts Daniel Lockwood. Oh my god. This is another character with wasted potential. So when Tyler was introduced in the show, he was supposed to be the werewolf element. You know, to he was the werewolf to Jacob's werewolf. So he was and much like Jacob, he was angry and frustrated and he had just a very hard time controlling his emotions. So he had a lot of potential. Like I'm not gonna lie, he actually had a lot of potential. His storyline was very, very interesting. But the showrunners, it was obvious that Tyler. Yeah, there are werewolves in Vampire Diaries. There are werewolves. So, but the tragic part is that it's very obvious that the showrunners only created Tyler's character to match Twilight, because everything about the vampire lore in the show. is very was in the beginning was very similar to twilight's vampires uh not vampire the werewolf lore i mean so werewolves they get angry very easily they they have a very hard time controlling their emotions but in this in this version instead of trig- their curse being triggered because of you know vampires in vampire diaries a we- you become a werewolf if you kill somebody so you if you have the werewolf gene and you end up killing someone you trigger the curse and every full moon you turn you don't have control over the dawn unlike uh, they did in twilight so that was the difference and they had there was so much they could have done with this character but after his introduction and after like he got quite a bit of development as well but then it all kind of just fell flat because they didn't know what to do with him anymore and they just kind of kept writing him out of the story and bringing him back when it was convenient and then writing him out again so this was a character with wasted potential and in the end he just died you didn't see him in the show for like two seasons and they bring him back for like 5 minutes just to kill him and i thought it would be very shocking for the fans and make them go like oh no tyler and i was but initially when i first watched the show and he died i was like who the fuck is this am i supposed to care jeremy gilbert this is elena's younger brother and again another character with wasted potential so jeremy so jeremy in the beginning is just this annoying bratty teenager that makes you want to smack him as you know you want to do with most teenagers But then his story starts developing and he's like he almost becomes like this super cool hunter until they realize they don't know what to do with him. So once again, they write him out of the show, they bring him back, they write him out of the show, they bring him back and this kind of just keeps on happening with his character a lot. And there was like they had this whole mystical hunter storyline and he was the focus of it. And it just it was all for nothing. It's all for nothing. This also this guy also died a couple of times, like much like Bonnie, he also died a couple of times and they just brought him back whenever it was convenient. Hey. <sighs> this is what happens when you let a show run for way too long. This bitch. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I hate this guy. I hate don't like the actor who plays him. I don't like the character. Alaric was kind of fun in the beginning, but later he just down 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 it's like some characters get you know some characters have development that's positive some characters have development that's negative this guy was negative and i just can't stand him i'm sorry i can't stand alloric fuck this guy i don't know why he's the focus of he's in literally every vampire diary spin off and god i don't know why enzo ah enzo ha <sighs> 
so when enzo first came in the show he was kind of antagonistic he was supposed to be like a villain but then later he kind of dwaddled between being the bad guy and being the good guy and then after that he became the good guy and then he fucking died i don't know why they do this it's like they take a character and they just kill him and i know it's supposed to be for like that shock and maybe it's supposed to make you cry and it's supposed to make you feel something but i can't feel anything when you just kill off characters for no fucking reason and there's another reason why enzo's death annoyed the fuck out of me but i'm going to get on to, into that later so i know that the original the original vampire family played a big role in the show but i'm not going to be talking about them like their characters one by one because i want to save if i do this again and i do a review of the originals i want to do that in that so yeah now we're going to discuss the show season by season season 1 i think season 1 was season 1 and 2 were one of the best seasons of the show um so as we know cw w doesn't always do the best when it comes to shows they have they don't have much of a budget and they always have like the same like recipe to make a show but the vampire diaries in its, in its early stages wasn't actually that bad so season 1 we see elena as she's struggling to move on from her parents death and we see her um and we see her fall in love with stefan and while all of this is happening in the beginning of season 1 we have damon as the antagonist he is like the bad guy because he's going around killing people and he's trying to fuck up stefan's life and all of this happens until uh until he finds out that bonnie is a benet witch now you must wonder like what does that have to do with anything so here's the thing so when damon and stefan were still human that was like the war era like i think this was before this was around the time of the civil war in america so um when so they were the kids of this like really like this noble guy nobleman and at that time a girl named katrina petrova came to stay with them and that was katherine the girl in the picture over here she was a vampire and she basically kind of played both the brothers like she was involved with both of them and she many times she used compulsion to make them be more submissive to her so obviously both of them fell in love with katherine both of them wanted to be with katherine and as i stated before when i was doing a review of her character katherine don't give a fuck she going to she's going to push you in front of a train if that means that she gets to live So Catherine before uh so what happened was that in the town this was Mystic Falls back before, during the Civil War era the humans actually knew about the vampires and they were trying to ir- get rid of them so what they did was they got a witch to do a spell and with that spell they sealed all the vampires in the town into a tomb forever they wouldn't die but without blood they would slowly desiccate and that that's basically what they try to do to Catherine but before obviously uh, Stefan and Damon try to save her they died got turned into vampires blah 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 so the whole point of season 1 is basically Damon trying to open the tomb to set Catherine free until he realizes surprise surprise Catherine was never there it's all actually pretty interesting because i mean the story doesn't exactly have that immediate focus from the very beginning but it gets there it's not all that bad you know it's not all that bad it gets there slowly but steadily season 2 now season 2 i have to say i would say is my favorite um so basically halfway through season 2 they stop what the book Catherine's trying to do and they realize that elena's life is in danger Surprise surprise. <laughs> so season 2's antagonist his the big bad was this guy on the screen Klaus Michaelson. He is the original vampire. So basically vampires originated from this one family and he is one of the originals. 
and he is supposed to be a werewolf vampire hybrid so for him to and his werewolf side has been sealed away and for him to undo the seal he needs the doppelganger that is elena so the thing is season the thing that made season 2 extremely interesting was the way they set up the villain so throughout the season everyone was constantly talking about klaus but we didn't see klaus they were, they were all just talking about him and what he did what he could do how dangerous he was and how how terrifying his anger was but we never got to see klaus until the very very end and the payoff to it was also very good because the moment klaus showed up he started he did everything that everyone want the main characters about he immediately starts killing bitches left and right and you know that this guy is bad like he is a messed up individual and that's and that's like the that's a good thing because now you have a compelling villain right you have this villain you learn to fear because and it's not even a, it's not a let down because a lot of shows build up the villain but then when the villain shows up you're just like oh my god seriously so yeah they did a really good job with klaus then season 3 came <sighs> boy season 3 Season three wasn't bad, but for me it wasn't good either. The biggest problem of season three was so now we had so when season three came along, um, I felt like Klaus had overstayed his welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's a heavy sigh because oh god. So you know when you have a very good villain. You want an outcome that kind of just neatly wraps up the story with a nice little bow on the top, so you can move on. They didn't do that. Instead of tying up Klaus's story, he stayed, and he, in my opinion, stayed for way too long. Like, um, he left Mystic Falls. We still followed him. He tried to make new hybrids. We followed his that story too. He turned Stefan into. So okay so vampires have another thing. So they can switch off their humanity. I don't know how it works. The show is very vague about it. It's like suppose apparently when your humanity switched off, you don't feel any emotions. But and to switch on your humanity, you have to feel emotions again. But then all the vampires who have their humanity switched off constantly feel emotions like anger annoyance happiness i don't know it's it's a very weird thing that they introduced which never made any sense to me so basically klaus so we follow around klaus for way too much and then he comes back to mystic falls then his whole family comes to mix mystic falls the woman on the screen is supposed to be esther the original witch she is Klaus's mom and the person who turned her son and other children into vampires, you know, the maker of the curse. If, if that's one way to put it. Oh my God! Oh, this character. And she basically comes back from the dead. Yeah, she is dead, and she comes back from the dead, like every other character in the show. She comes back from the dead to kill her children, but the problem is. If she kills her children, all the vampires that they create al- along the way will also die. And then there was this whole thing. She wanted to kill her children, but then she couldn't do it because they were obviously they were like, "Yeah, no, I don't think we're okay with that, mom. You can't kill us." And then then she tried to create the ultimate vampire that happened to be Alaric. Oh my god, fucking Alaric! I swear to God. So she turned Alaric into a vampire, and then he turned into a weird. cultist oh my god everything about alaric was so weird because like he tried to hold elena hostage and went like kill the vampires kill the vampires and it was just very it was very salem witch trialy it was all very weird i season 4 oh good god i i'm that's what i'm saying guys one season 1 to 2 Good. Three tolerable. Four onwards, it was just hell on earth. 
season 4 introduced the five the five were this group of hunters who were sworn to kill all vampires and they had some mystic abilities and shit oh god it was also dreary i just could not pay attention i've seen this show so many times and i could not pay attention i could not give a fuck so basically jeremy gilbert elena's brother is one of the five oh another thing by the end of season 3 elena dies she dies and she becomes a vampire so in season 4 she's a vampire um yeah so the five is supposed to be like this brotherhood and like with every vampire they kill a tattoo appears on their arm leading to sil uh, leading to the cure what is the cure the cure is this thing you take and suddenly you're not a vampire anymore it's a cure to vampirism you become human again but the reason why by season 4 the show goes downhill is because instead of sticking to the story the lore that they created the show run and start retconning it so first you had the michelson family as the original vampire family but now with season 4 you introduced to a uh, the antagonist named silas who's apparently he he's apparently the first vampire ever and other vampires are just perversions of him no he's not a vampire he he prefers to be called an immortal but he, he also needs to he is a witch and he can do magic but if he does magic it takes a toll on him so he has to drink blood it's all very weird they basically just retconned their whole lore just to show on this new character and season 4 was so boring that they had to bring in different antagonists and play out different storylines just to keep people interested because every season of vampire diaries is like 20 something episodes so they had to do something to keep people watching so like you had these guys the five then you had this guy who latches on who, he's i don't know man he his existence was always so weird to me so he's obsessed with finding silas because he thinks that if he releases silas then silas can grant his any wish and his wish is to bring back his dead wife and for that he basically commits genocide he kills he massacres people uh 13 humans 13 which is something like that yeah and in the end it's all for nothing silas gets free and his wife doesn't come back and instead he just dies ha <sighs> season 5 I think season 5 had the worst antagonist ever this guy named Marco or something oh god i don't even remember his name season 5 was probably the lowest point for the show they introduced this new sect of people known as the travelers which is again and you know the show was all so when the whole doppelganger thing began in the beginning of the show interesting but then by season 5 it goes bad shit crazy you have so many doppelgangers running around it's insane so basically silas wait hold on i have a picture hold on hold on yeah this is silas no 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 it's not stefan this is silas the first immortal and stefan is his doppelganger so because there's a silas who looks exactly like stefan obviously silas had a girlfriend who looks exactly like elena and that's and that's how the doppelganger thing began and the reasoning for it is oh god it is so bad so basically silas was a strong witch and he married he was set to marry this lady katsia and her gift to him for their wedding was immortality basically 
and they were supposed to take this cure to Im- for Im- like they basically were supposed to take this immortality spell together but instead of doing that Cyrus steals it and runs off to his girlfriend Amara I couldn't get a better picture I'm sorry she does not have a lot of good pictures she's there for like she's there in the show for like a, a minute a hot minute and then she dies but yeah so instead so he steals the cure the immortality spell and he gives it to Amara instead so him and Amara become immortal and because the two of them have become mortal nature so the show has a very famous line called nature finds a balance so basically since these two can't die nature created doppelgangers to die in their place that is the reasoning for all the doppelgangers i hate it i hate everything about it i wish they hadn't done this so yeah that's this you have this whole love triangle going on oh yeah another thing <laughs> very fun very interesting by the end of the last season bonnie dies again so she is dead and she is just running around in spirit form and what this chicky over here katsia does as so um when katsia fi- found out that silas had betrayed her instead of moving on like a normal person she goes she finds the place where him and amara are hiding out she makes a cure for immortality gives it to um, supposedly gives it to amara and kills her but what she actually so what she actually did was turn amara into the link to the other side what's the other side oh you're going to love this so the other side is a place where all supernatural creatures di- go when they die it's kind of like limbo there's nothing there it's kind of like they're walking right beside you but you just can't see them so they never find peace so she created the other side so that um what a thought nature would find a way to kill immortals much easier also are happy body dying so much can't be good this <laughs> god she's died so many times in the show i am not even kidding um she almost dies um defeating klaus she dies dies here then later on she almost dies then she dies dies again then she almost dies again it kind of just keeps on going on and on but yeah so basically katsia's big plan was that um when silas would die since he's a supernatural creature being a witch he would go to the other side and he would never be reunited with amara like girl i'm sorry like he got betrayed but please consider therapy and consider moving on so yeah this bitch crazy this bitch also crazy so basically amara and silas both die amara ends up killing him so much for true love you know she just kills him and then season 6 comes along oh my god so by the end of season 5 the other side finally goes down and in this process you know every single character that died along the way surprise surprise they all come back to life you know this is one of the reasons why I, you can't take death seriously in the show everyone just comes back to life so yeah everyone comes back to life except for bonnie and damon he dies at the end of the last season both of them instead get sent to another world where they meet this adorable looking gentleman known as kai parker now kai was the like after klaus he is one of the most interesting villains the show has come up with because even after K- kai you have horrible villains just horrible kai is charismatic he's silly okay and he fucking murders people and he describes it describes it in such a fun manner where you're just like you, you know you're just watching him with your eyes wide thinking what the fuck is wrong with this guy but you can't hate him because he's so charismatic and even though season 6 was 6 was it all that with prison world drama and bonnie being tortured yeah so um basically kai is from this coven of witches known as the gemini coven and because he is murderous and practically killed most of his siblings um instead of making because people they didn't want him to become the leader of the coven they put him in this thing known as a prison world where he can never die he's there forever like time kind of stops still there to ex- escape the prison world 
and uh, Bonnie and uh, this guy Damon end up in the same prison world. Now, if they want to escape, they gotta take him with him, uh, take Kai with them. But Bonnie's like, no, we can't do that. He's a murderer. So yeah, Kai basically tortures her a lot because she manages to send Damon ahead. So he stabs her, breaks her leg, kind of just basically tortures her a lot. And the fun part, the fun part of it all, was like there was a time where the showrunners and all the interviews kept saying that they wanted Bonnie and Kai to end up together. And I'm like, girl, you crazy? He tortured her. What the fuck are you talking about? <sighs> but yeah. Season 7, oh my god, this was a fucking mess. Oh, the last two seasons of the show are the worst. So by the end of season 6, um, Elena was officially out of the story. She was put into this sleeping spell and it's, it was said that as long as Bonnie is alive, Elena would remain asleep. Um, season 7 introduced these witches, these vampires known as the heretics. They're on the screen right now. Heretics are vampires that can do magic which according to the lore of the show should not be possible but somehow it is so according to the show witches are connected to nature and when they die or or when they're turned into vampires that connection between nature and witches it's broken so they can't practice magic ever again then after that later on they introduced this thing known as a siphon a siphon is a witch who doesn't have any magic of their own so they have to siphon it for from magical objects basically by touch so the reasoning of the show is that siphons when turned into vampires can still do magic because they're siphons that's it that's the reason but again it doesn't make any sense but yeah it was this was a thing and this was one of the m- God, it was horrible. This season was so slow, so boring. And at one point, they didn't know what to do. So they started a fight club. Like literally started a fight club. The lady in the middle, like right in the forefront is Lily. She is Stefan and Damon's mother. Yes, their mother is still alive and a vampire somehow. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know why they even brought her into the show. She dies at the end, so... But yeah, the the whole season was so slow. She dies, then they start a vampire fight club, which was so weird. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Can you get to the point? Like they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Then they retconned their own lore again and brought in this mystical hunter named Reyna Cruz. And that, you know, once she marks you, she won't stop until she kills you. And then that becomes a whole thing. And then, and then basically Stefan gets marked and has to be on the run for his life forever. Oh, God, it was so bad. Season eight. Oh yeah, season seven. She was. This is Reina, the mystical hunter. Season eight. Season eight was the final season of the show, and God, I was so happy it was ending. I wasn't sad that it was ending. I was happy because everything had gone so downhill. So this lady here is Sybil. So now into season now into season 8 they introduced another supernatural species which was the sirens. And that is that is what Sybil is. She sings and once you hear her sing you will be compelled to do what she wants. And she has more of an effect on men than she does on women. Season 8 was such a mess. It's like they went to the writers and told them, hey, you know what, go wild. And they did. Thankfully, it wasn't in like a, you know, a Riverdale kind of wild. <laughs> but yeah, so they went wild, right? So season eight saw the introduction of hell. And it's not even your normal hell with you know satan being this goat man with a pitchfork no this guy here is satan who is he he's not satan either that's not his name his name is Cade. 
he was like some powerful psychic who was killed like burned at the stake and when he was dying his anger and anguish created a psychic blast which made its own little universe like sort of pocket that he then turned into hell and then he went around collecting the souls of supernatural creatures who had been bad which you know satan kid looking good <laughs> yeah so yeah he is pretty good looking that i'll give him that i'll give you that but unfortunately apart from his good looks he has nothing else he has a very bland personality he tries to be menacing but eh, doesn't strike the fear of god in me you fail satan you fail so yeah so here once again the show was retconning its own lore because previously they said that all supernatural creatures went to the other side which is limbo but now they were saying that there's a hell and that kid has been taking supernatural creatures there for for a very long time like if you've been bad he's taken you but yeah this was a thing but don't no worries guys they find a way to defeat satan oh my god <sighs> the relationships oh my god so the first relationship we're going to be talking about is elena and stefan they were actually pretty good together they made sense together and then they broke up which never made any sense to me so stefan is basically the kind of boyfriend anyone would want he's nice he's supportive he puts your needs first he takes care of you he's you know he takes care of you and he wants you to make your own decisions in life like he doesn't dictate what you do but then in the end the relationship didn't work out it kind of just fell apart and this show many times hinted at them getting back together but that just never happened and there's a reason for that this is the reason for that elena and damon god if you ever watch you know if you start watching vampire diaries and you're at the first season you would never think that elena would end up with damon but she does and it's one of the worst things ever like even the actors didn't like that Elena and Damon's relationship is the opposite of Stefan and Elena's. Damon is controlling. He will constantly tell Elena what to do and he is a mess without her. So Damon's only reason for being a good person is Elena because Elena will only stay with him if he behaves. If he stops behaving, she leave him. But then there are so many times in the show when they kind of sort of break up and the moment they break up Damon goes over to, over to to the dark side and he does a lot of fucked up shit like there's a point in the show where uh, it's one of the last seasons when this is this happens where he is sure that he and Elena will never be together again and he, he's afraid that he's lost her so what he does is he hunts down this girl and he kills her he kills somebody because elena broke up with him and then later later he actually kills tyler lockwood and shoves his dead body into the trunk of his car and leaves it there and no one even knows that tyler is dead until they find his body in the trunk so yeah their relationship is that feels like a relationship that should fail yeah i know it does it feels like a relationship that can never be like it's the kind of relationship where you know you see what your partner is doing and you go like uh i need to get the fuck out of here but instead they stay together until the very end it's horrible like can you imagine breaking up with good kind supporting stefan for f- damon i murder people when i'm angry salvatore Bonnie and Jeremy. So as I stated before, Bonnie has never had men- many good storylines in the show. They it was a very long time before they actually gave her a storyline. 
so she's not had a lot of romantic interests either one of her main romances in the show is with jeremy who is elena's younger brother and they actually made sense together they were they were basically how do I, they were basically like what elena and stefan were but better they loved each other they cared for each other they did what they could to protect each other and they supported each other but then the thing that happened was that because bonnie's died so many times in the show this relationship did not last and with jeremy coming and going obviously it kind of just faded they didn't even officially break up is at one point they just stopped being girlfriend and boyfriend you didn't get a breakup scene or them you know parting ways it just it's just like the showrunners kind of forgot <laughs> they were like eh who cares i care i care like the relationship was so strong that at one point when the whole silas thing was going on jeremy actually dies and bonnie gives her her own life to bring him back that's how she died during that time and because of that he's the only one who can see her so yeah the showrunner just kind of forgot about this relationship rip jeremy and bonnie you were good together but as good as these two were i think enzo and bonnie were better they had this enemies to lovers thing going on but better than what lena and damon had and they were just very good together you know what every loving relationship should be not in the beginning of course because in the beginning they hated each other but then you know you get to see how they grew on one another and the thing is their relationship was kind of rushed but even in the short clips that the that they put in the show to show like you know how these two fell in love the actors had such good chemistry it made sense and you believed it <sighs> but because bonnie can't have anything good in her life just when her and enzo decide to move in together and you know start a new chapter in their lives enzo dies this happens in the last season of the show they just kill him off they kill him off they take away bonnie's magic they just basically leave her helpless with nobody to take care of her she is freaking alone during this whole time and even then she was saving everyone's ass it was very sad like god the showrunner julie peck really did yeah justice for bonnie she did not like bonnie it was freaking bad Whoa. this thankfully never became a romantic thing but so around season 6 season 7ish season 6 to 7 bonnie and damon's relationship deepened it like became very good they were like you know they were the kind of people that you would think would end up together that was like that was how good the chemistry was and during this time a lot of the fans of the shows show were also rooting for them to get together but the showrunners didn't want that for some reason so you have you would constantly have these interviews where fans would constantly ask that hey do you think bonnie and damon would be a thing in the future and for many people it made sense because damon was actually a bonnie made him a better person and not in a very dependent way but every time that question was asked the showrunners just kind of directed it to kai instead they were like oh but what about bonnie and kai and they always made you wonder like why would you want bonnie to end up with a psychopath especially one that tortured her and almost killed her like why would you want that and the answer is simple they just didn't want to give bonnie good things <sighs> thankfully this relationship never came to be so that's that's one good thing i guess oh, caroline and tyler oh god when their relationship started it wasn't bad okay they made sense together they helped each other a lot caroline was a new vampire tyler was a new werewolf and they bonded but this is a relationship that just went on for way too long because by one point in the show 
they weren't even talking to each other because Tyler wasn't even in the show. He would just show up for like funerals and shit, and then he'd just leave again. But like, you know why the showrunners just stuck to the this pairing? Because at one after one point, you're just like, oh god, can you just guys just break up? It's not even like because. You don't even want to break them up because they're bad for each other. You just want to break them up because this relationship is so. This relationship is not even a relationship at this point because, you know, for, for it to be one, you actually both partners need to talk to each other, which wasn't happening. But yeah, thankfully, by one point, they did break up. Uh. Ugh. Pass. Caroline and Klaus. This was a big thing. So while Caroline was still dating Tyler, everyone wanted her to end up with Klaus instead. The two of them, like I am not gonna lie, they have amazing chemistry together. Everyone wanted this, and they kind of teased it so many times throughout the show for it to n- just not go anywhere. And the funny part is, okay, here's the thing. So after Klaus officially left the show, they brought in Enzo. and you could tell that Enzo was everything it was just basically in the beginning it was just a copy of Klaus the way he spoke the way he behaved his connection with Caroline everything was a copy of Klaus because so the thing that happened is Klaus left the show because he his family would star in another vampire diaries spin-off known as the originals so he left the show because of that and obviously fans weren't happy because they wanted Caroline and Klaus to be together so the solution that they came up with was the introduction of Enzo and in the in the beginning you could see that you know he was supposed to be in a relationship with Caroline everything hinted at that they were always together and the way he spoke and behaved was exactly the way Klaus would when he was around her but thankfully they kind of changed tracks and that was for the better because mm Claude Caroline and Enzo it just didn't make sense. Caroline and Stefan. Yeah, I know Caroline has a lot of relationship with the people in the show. Huh. Caroline and Stefan ended up being end game and while like so when you look at Caroline and Klaus together it's all very snappy, sassy, good chemistry, a lot of heat. With Stefan it was more on the sweeter side and I actually kind of like their relationship. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of them, but I like it because they were like friends, best friends who eventually fell in love and got married. Yeah, they did get married at the end only for, you know, Stefan to die one day after their marriage. So, oh my god. Basically, in the Vampire Diaries universe, unless you're Elena Gilbert, you don't get good things. But then again, Alena ended up a demon so I guess nobody get good gets good things. Ugh, disgusting. Everything about this pairing is this fucking gusting. And I'm going to explain why. So, Caroline and Alaric. When Alaric is first introduced in the show, he is a teacher while Caroline is a high school student. and obviously when they get together she is she was supposed to be in college but oh my god so caroline's a vampire right she is a vampire throughout the majority of the show she got turned by season 1 or 2 itself so she is a vampire so she can't ever have children because she's dead dead but in se- at the end of season 6 alaric is about to marry a girl named Jo and Jo is pregnant with his kids Jo also happens to be Kai's twin sister so Kai shows up kills everybody kills Jo and so her coven to protect the children they transfer the kids from Jo's dying body into Caroline's body so basically she's forced to give birth to Alaric's kids not something i ever thought i would be saying but i am Ugh. i think one of the reasons why they went with the storyline was because the actress for caroline was pregnant at the time but god that was so odd and i think i mean you could still kind of digest this whole idea of caroline having to give birth to alaric's kids 
until Alaric starts being very possessive of her, like you know she's his wife. Like sir, you were a high school teacher. You have always been like a parental figure. Can you not? I don't know what they were thinking. Thankfully, they never had a romantic thing going because Caroline liked Stefan instead. But yeah, so yeah, that was the Vampire Diaries, a show that had potential, started off pretty good, but it was just freaking downhill. I mean, I know I have skipped over quite a few characters because. Honestly, over eight seasons, they've had many characters coming and going, and I'm not gonna be touching on all of them. Fuck that, not doing that. If I haven't spoken about someone, it was most likely because they were very, very insignificant, to me at least, and also to the plot. But yeah, the Vampire Diaries started off good; it had potential, but it was ruined because of corporate greed. Because Obviously, when something has high ratings and such a big fan following, you don't want to want to end it. You want to milk the cash cow for as long as you can, and that's what they did. And the end result was something horrible, because you could see that even the showrunners themselves, at one point, had lost lost interest. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't care about what they were doing. They were just writing shit out and hoping that nobody would call them out on it. And all these characters and. It's just but obviously it's still better than what the, whatever the fuck is going on with Riverdale, but yeah, and it's kind of sad too because you know when you watch the show, you can see that the actors are actually you know they're putting in the effort, they're doing their best to portray their characters' emotions, and to make the shitty scene that they've been given something worthwhile. Like because right now when I'm talking about the show, I haven't even touched on the many many inconsistencies that have occurred throughout. For instance, vampires can run super fast, like so fast you can't even see them. But in the show, most of the time you'll see vampires go to a ca- run. You know when they have to run away from something, instead of just running for it, they will run to a car and then struggle to open the ki- car car door as they panic. I'm like, why the fuck do you need a car? You're a fucking vampire. What's wrong with you? Because it's basically the showrunners themselves didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They didn't know what their characters were, what they had done, what their stories were, and they were just doing shit for the sake of it. And they were going like, hey, what if we just add this plot point in, like this new ability, and if anyone asks why? We never explain it. This is bad writing. It's basically taking a decent story and just bloating it so much that when the end comes around, there's no one left to read it. Or at least, even if there's someone left to read it, it's not because they appreciate it. And it's tragic. I have to say, it's pretty sad. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, that's the Vampire Diaries. I hope you guys enjoyed my quick review and my very, very annoyed face as I did it. But God, can you blame me? <laughs> Hold on. Ah, there we go. So that's gonna be the end for today's stream because obviously we have. Completely, we have come to the end of our review. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. I was thinking of doing this for a while. In in the beginning, I thought I would just like make, like record this on my own and just edit the video and post it. But I wanted to do it live because I kind of wanted to hear what your thoughts were on it. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you did, I would. I know I'd like to actually do more like these in the future, like not just cover shows but also like books and manga and anime and stuff. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, let me know. <laughs> but yeah. Also, one more thing that I'm noticing: you all be watching my videos, but you're not subscribing. Like, what the hell's going on here? You gotta hit the follow button, okay? I don't wanna come to my Twitch later in the morning. And see, like there are like twenty something views, but where are my twenty something followers? Come on, guys! 
come on yeah so i had fun doing this because like i've been thinking about this for actually a pretty long time like when i first started streaming i wanted to do like a review thing but i wasn't very sure about how it would be like a, like if people would enjoy it or not because i know that most of the time when it comes to streaming a lot of people want to either watch streamers play games or you know just chat with them but i wanted to do something a bit different it's not like i won't talk to you while i'm giving the review obviously if you're going to say if you say something in the chat i will definitely respond Bec- and that's the whole point of doing this live because then we can you know you can share your point your your opinion i share mine and we can have a discussion <laughs> right yeah that was today's stream guys thank you so much for coming and watching and for sitting through this i know like i have some kinks to work out <laughs> but yeah i'll see you i'm going to be ending this for here now what the hell did i just say what for here now oh my god my mind sometimes you know when people have this thing right where they think they think about the sentence first and then they say it my brain cells don't do that i have two of them one of them is always napping the other just says shit and i say shit and then i realize wait that didn't make sense hi but yeah that is it for today's stream guys thank you so much for stopping by i'll see you next time bye